Hi folks, welcome along to another video on the channel. It's good to see you once again. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help to grow the channel. Please click the join button as well to see the various levels of membership that you can select from to become a member of our growing community. I highly recommend the junior membership level as the best value, 99 pence per month, and that gets you access to all of my members-only video content, which will drop every Wednesday. That is my new release schedule that we are working to from now on. I'm going to release regular videos every Sunday at 6 p.m. UK time, and uh, members-only videos every week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. UK time. In the last video, I talked about the question of whether you could rely on Microsoft as your end-to-end -end security provider. This provoked quite a large response, mostly positive, I have to say. Now, what I'm going to quickly address is I did get one or two negative comments on this. Um, well, I've got a few negative comments on the thought of using Microsoft as an end-to-end -end security provider was laughable to some people, and that's absolutely fine. That's a matter of opinion and experience. Uh, so I have no problem with that whatsoever. I did get quite a few people agreeing with me as well, which uh, w w was really, really cool. Uh, it provoked an interesting debate, which is all that I ever want to do on this channel. And I don't think there's ever any right or wrong answer. There is just your perspective. A slight can of worms that I maybe did open is in recent times, I have been a little bit more, shall we say, clickbaity with some of my thumbnail titles. And this has gone without any remarks for the most part for uh, most of the recent videos. This one though, it, it drew one or two responses of, well, you lured me in with that thumbnail, but you really didn't deliver on it. And uh, I would have stuck around and subscribed, but now I'm not gonna, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I had more comments, very kind comments saying, love that video, it made me subscribe, it made me find your channel. And that's all I'm trying to do at the end of the day. I don't, if I'm honest, want to do the clickbaity stuff. It, it's really against my nature. I, I'm not really cool with it, but I sort of have to do it to a certain extent because I want to grow this channel. And the YouTube algorithm is very unforgiving. It's not going to put your content in front of people that might want to see it, as has happened in this case, people who wouldn't have found my channel if it hadn't been for that, and they're grateful for that, and they've watched that video and taken something from it, and they've subscribed. But it's not gonna be the case for everyone. So I'll apologize to anyone who is upset by that, but I'm not gonna apologize for doing it because it's working. So there you go. If you do happen to have a problem with it, then in wrestling parlance, I have two words for you. No, don't watch. <laughs> anyway, enough of this useless banter. Let's crack on with today's topic. And just to prove that I am not a complete Microsoft shill, I am gonna be talking about five ways that Mac OS is better than Windows. Now, setting the scene for this a little bit, what I did was I asked this exact question of Microsoft Copilot. I typed in exactly that. Give me five ways that Apple Mac OS is better than Microsoft Windows. And it did exactly that. I'm gonna read each one out and then I'm gonna give my response. It's coming up. Number five, performance and stability. Mac OS is optimized for the hardware that it runs on, which can definitely lead to better performance and stability. In this case, Apple controls both the hardware and the software, allowing for a more streamlined and efficient user experience. Now, I do have to agree with this one. In terms of the hardware just being far, far superior to any Windows device I've ever used, it's just more sturdy, it's more well-built, it is definitely less prone to bugginess. You never get a, a blue screen of death on a Mac. I'm uh, very, very joyful whenever there's an incident like the CrowdStrike thing recently where blue screen of death was rampant across the world and I'm happily working away on my Mac unaffected. Not to say Macs never have problems, but it's just less often. I think that's indisputable for me anyway. If you've got a different experience, I will always listen to it. Mac devices just last longer as well. I've had something like uh, three Macs in the last probably 15 years. I can't imagine uh, lasting Windows devices that long. 
I have to say. I mean, you could do, but you'd probably have to go through multiple rebuilds and re-optimizations. Uh, now, the flip side of this argument is Mac is a lot more expensive in general. You, you pay for what you get. I think that's uh, always been the case with anything of quality in the world. So uh, it's definitely going to cost you more, but in my experience, it's going to be overall more reliable and it's going to last you longer. Number four, built-in software. macOS comes with a suite of built-in high-quality applications like Safari, Mail, iMovie and Photos. These apps are well integrated with the macOS operating system, provide a great out-of-the-box experience without needing additional purchases. Now this one I sort of do and don't agree with. I think if you are not a business user, I think that is probably going to be true. I, as somebody who's worked in, in business for many, many years, I, I couldn't get by without my Microsoft application. So the first thing I'm going to do when I put uh, my Mac in place, my new Mac, is I'm going to install Office 365 applications on it. I, I can't use Mail. Uh, I need my uh, Outlook and I need my Word and Excel, PowerPoint, all of that stuff. Uh, my wife is completely different to that. My wife is a creator. She's very, very digital creator. She's very arty. She will happily use Mail. She'll happily use Safari as her browser. I cannot stand Safari as my browser. First thing I'll do when I build Mac OS is I'll put Google Chrome on there as well, and Edge, of course. I, I would only go to Safari as an absolute last resort. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting argument, that one. I think uh, there are definitely two sides to that story, and I think it depends on what your use case is, what your needs are at the end of the day. Number three, security and privacy. Mac OS is generally considered to have strong security and privacy features. It includes built-in encryption, robust privacy controls, and a more controlled app ecosystem, which can reduce the risk of malware and other security threats. Now, this is a bold statement to me. I can kind of see where this is coming from, but I don't necessarily completely agree with it. What I will say from the off is that the security of any laptop device or any device in general is only as good as the user who is operating it. I think that's indisputable. I think we can all agree on that. Taking myself as an example, somebody who is security conscious, security aware, it's the nature of my job. So I'd be very, very remiss if I wasn't. But I'm not infallible. I've fallen for uh, the old phishing tests at uh, various places of work and uh, that sort of thing. So it's going to happen. You just have to be as vigilant and diligent as you possibly can. So in the time that I've been using a Mac, which is a good 15 plus years now, I've never had an antivirus program or an endpoint protection program of any sort installed on it, a third party. I've just run it out of the box with the built-in security and privacy tools that are uh, native to Mac OS. And I've never had any real problems. I've not felt that I've needed it. Only in the last few months when I wanted to demonstrate Defender for Endpoint on a Mac did I put Defender for Endpoint onto my own Mac with varying degrees of success. I mean, it's on, it's working, it's not reporting in Microsoft Purview, as some of you who've watched my videos will uh, be aware of. I'm still bringing myself to log a ticket with Microsoft to try and get to the bottom of that one. I remember in the early days of me being a Mac adopter, I was talking to a fellow uh, IT professional, uh, and I was saying, well, I've got a Mac, I don't need antivirus on mine. And his response to me was, uh, oh, you're one of them, are you? <laughs> but I think uh, if I was advising anyone as a Mac user, I would probably advise them to have some sort of additional protection on there. I would advise Defender for Endpoint to be installed onto their Mac OS device. As a belt and braces thing, really, as much as anything, defense in depth. I was comfortable operating without it for many, many years, but I'm now glad that I have that extra security added on. So I think I can see where this co-pilot response is coming from. But again, it's like polls, isn't it? If you, uh, the pollsters, they can engineer questions to uh, elicit the responses that they want to get. You can ask a question in a certain way to get certain answers. So this video is probably very, very subjective. In fact, I'm already thinking in my head, I'll do the reverse video very, very soon on the channel uh, in terms of ways that Windows is superior to Mac OS. So there you go.
Number two, integration with Apple ecosystem. If you use other Apple products like iPhone, Apple Watch, or iPad, Mac OS offers seamless integration. Features like AirDrop, Handoff, and Universal Clipboard make it easy to switch between devices and share content effortlessly. Now this I do completely agree with. I would be absolutely lost without my Apple ecosystem. I have a MacBook, I have an iPhone. I, I don't have an iPad at the moment, but I have had iPads in the past. And what I love are these features where everything just works across those devices. You can have iMessage on your MacBook, which is wonderful. Uh, you can do the AirDrop functionality to transfer wirelessly between those devices. Sure, there's ways of doing that with other um, mixes of devices. If you had like Windows with an Android phone or Windows with, a, with an iPhone. But you're losing the benefit of that seamless built-in native integration, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Something that Apple does unlike anybody else. They just get it. It just works, to quote the late great Steve Jobs. All of my family use iPhones and it just is great for sending messages. I mean, we use iMessage to communicate for free. When I come across somebody who doesn't have an iPhone and I add them onto my contacts, then I don't want to send them a text message. That takes iMessage out of the equation. I have to send them a text message. Therefore, on that occasion, I need WhatsApp. Now, you could say that just use WhatsApp all the time, but why should I have to? Truth be told, I do use WhatsApp for most people, really. It just uh, is the way I've ended up, the habits I've got into. But I really do like that tight integration, the way that you can just be seamless. It, it really is fantastic. Now, you could argue that Microsoft do that as well. A good example of that, I think, is Microsoft Teams, the way that if I'm sat right here at my desk working on a Teams call, I've suddenly got to go and pick up my, my son from college. I can just quickly transfer that call to Teams on my iPhone and I'm on my way. So uh, there's definitely pluses and minuses, but I do very much agree with this one in principle. And number one, user interface and design. macOS is known for its sleek, intuitive and consistent user interface. The design is clean and aesthetically pleasing, which many users find more enjoyable and easier to navigate. Now, this one, of course, is definitely apples and oranges, or apples and Microsofts, if you want to be precise. Now, I, for one, agree with this. I have used macOS consistently for 15 plus years, and I just find the layout definitely more simplistic, definitely more uh, user-friendly and easier to use. It always seems less cluttered, less busy than Windows. And over the years, it has remained consistent. We're on macOS Sequoia now is the latest operating version, which has just been released alongside iOS 18. And very little has changed in terms of how the look and feel has evolved since the early days. I think when I first got involved with macOS when I first started looking at it and adopting it. I think we were on macOS Snow Leopard. Obviously, the functions and uh, features have changed and evolved over that time. It's got a sleeker uh, look rather than some of those more woody icons and backgrounds that we used to have. But overall, the layout has remained the same. You cannot say the same of the various Windows versions over the years, going from 3.1 to 95 to 98 to ME to 2000 to XP to Vista to um, 7 to 8, 8.1 to what came next? Uh, Windows 10, Windows 11. Windows 10 was meant to be the last version, but then they changed their mind. So Windows is just so all over the place and... Uh, and, and yeah, but saying that, the counter argument, I've had a conversation many a time with users who are astonished that me, Mr. Microsoft, uses a, a Mac device because I, I just cannot work on Windows. And, and, and they have the reverse argument. They say, oh, I couldn't work on a Mac. I, I took a look at one once and I just couldn't get my head around it. So it is what you're used to and what you're comfortable with, I do believe. I was the same in the early days of me looking at Macs. Uh, probably my first recollection of of, of working on a Mac was uh, when I worked for a, a seafoods company and, and the owner, he had a Mac device and he wanted me to troubleshoot it for him. And I was I'd never seen one before. Like, what the heck am I meant to do with this one? I couldn't even figure out how to right click, how to power it on and off. It was, it was a nightmare, but you learn as you go and you get used to things. So I, th I think that's key to that statement. But I, for one, I'm happily ensconced in my macOS ecosystem and I love it. 
So there you have it. Five reasons why Mac OS is better than Windows. Didn't agree with them all. I agreed with some. I agreed with bits of some and not so much other bits of some. <laughs> but there you have it. And I think we'll definitely do the reverse video very, very soon. We'll look at ways that Windows is better than Mac OS. I can't wait for that. Anyway, thank you for watching. As always, give me a like, a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. What's your experience of macOS versus Windows? Tell me in the comments. Share your feelings. Always love to hear from you. Okie dokie, let's wind things up. And please do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so. That really helps me more than you know. A good percentage of my uh, viewers are not subscribed to the channel. It is absolutely free and it takes a second to do so. So please do hit that button and make sure you turn on the notifications bell as well. Thank you all for your continued and wonderful support. I hear from so many of you via the comments, via LinkedIn. It's always great to hear from you. I am so excited about taking this channel forward and doing more great content for you. Another members video coming on Wednesday. Watch out for that if you're a junior member or above on the channel. And I will see you down the road. Stay safe, travel well, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.